Okay, so the box arrived. I've already opened it. Um, but I've got a chain ring, this is 42 teeth. Brake sensors. I've got the display. This is the 500C. Went for the little one. This is a 40. 48 volt battery and it's 20 amp hours. Rubber spacers or something. Mounts, uh, screws, and some keys. And this is the motor. All the hardware for mounting it. Two metal crank arms. That's the tool. Some cable ties. And then this is the motor itself. Nice and heavy. And then in here is just all the cables you need. More connectors. And then you've got a light and some gloves and other stuff. So let's try and connect it to the bike. So I believe it's going to go through there like that. So we immediately have a problem when this goes in. It's hitting this plastic. Okay. So that's that's off hopefully it'll be out of the way. This should go straight through. Fuck. The issue I have now is that these two lines that go inside the frame, this one here is just fat enough. It's being compressed when the motor slides through. Now this fatter one is a brake line, so I'm a bit concerned it's going to damage if it gets compressed against the metal frame for a long period of time and rubs up and down with the vibrations of the bike. So basically my options are to just go with it, or the second option is to take the brake line out completely. There's another option. I could file away a slight indentation, um, so I think that's what I'm going to do. Four to four to six centimeters from this end. I've roughly marked where I need to file away. Um, it's between this point and this point. Um, but it's going to have to be inside here, between here, because of the way the motor's uh, lined up against the frame. The smaller files are a whole lot easier to uh, get in the tight space between them. And part way through filing through this and I've realised that I can undo these screws and I might be able to take this part off, make it much easier to file. I don't know what's going to be inside here. Yeah? Hopefully nothing falls out. Very well greased, which is nice to see. That doesn't help us. So 
so it's the next morning. Uh, I did, I don't know how much last night, probably pff, over three hours, but it hasn't really done much. So today's tactic is I'm gonna try and use this smaller file to file away the exact point It. it might be better if I show you some photographs. So the time has come to put the motor in. I'm just going to apply some of this waxy grease to help stop corrosion and rust just on the part that goes inside the uh, bottom bracket. I'm not going to put any on the thread. I'm also going to apply the same waxy stuff just on the cables. I'm hoping it's not going to damage the plastic or the metal cables. I'm just going to hope for the best. Next we're going to need the hardware, this tool, I believe, this piece, this piece, this piece, and a couple of bolts, I'm not sure which ones. So I think this part uses this set of screws and washers. I don't know if you can see, but because my bike has a 73mm bottom bracket, there's a little gap here for where the bolt goes in and it hits this lug here. So what I've decided to do is use the original bolt on this bottom one because it's captive um, and I'm going to use a longer bolt on the top one so it can go all the way through and then I've decided to use three of the spring washers that come with the kit um, and then on this top one I'll just use an extra normal washer um, yeah and we'll see what that does try and apply a little bit of Loctite on the bolt 
Shit. That's one. Holy shit, that was too much. So this plate has lugs on one side, not on the other. So you want the raised part to go against the bottom bracket. So let's try and put this on. I've got this torque wrench um, to help keep the pressure even for both the bolts and to make sure I'm not doing it up too tight or too loose. So I've set it to three at the moment. I've just noticed it's starting to get a bit more tight to move the motor. So when we do the next bit of tightening, I'm going to hold it in, its, in the place I want it to be, which is about here. Okay, both of the bolts have reached torque of three newton meters. I still think it could be tighter, so I'm going to raise it. I don't actually know what the torque specification is for these, but I think that seems about right. The locking nut's going to go on here afterwards at very tight, 50 or 60 newton meters. That's only five, this is going to be 50. King ring. It goes on here. It says here it wants 50 to 60 newton meters of torque. But this is the only tool that I have to do it up with, and I can't get a torque with it. So I'll just do it up tight and just try and uh, feel it. Another little bit of Loctite. And then just put it on. So the motor is all on. This is as tight as I can get it. I'm just worried this bolt is so close to the frame. There's daylight through it. You can see the red goes through but there's only a few well probably about a millimetre gap at the moment there isn't much movement but we'll never know until we take the bike out for real because my bottom bracket is the 73 millimetre one I couldn't get this final locking ring on because there's no um, thread left to thread it onto it does look nicer with that on but unfortunately I can't have that on mine. Right, left. This is, I think, the 42 tooth. No, this is the 44 teeth. This is the one that comes, I think, standard. But if we put it on, it just, just touches my frame. This is too big. Luckily, I have this one. So this was sent to me very kindly for free. Um, by the guys I bought it off, um, they're called Varstrom. Um, I told them that my 44 teeth um, was too big and they said um, that they'd send me out this one for free. So now I have a 36 tooth, plenty of room. Um, so that one should fit. The only trouble I can foresee is it affecting my chain line, but we'll have to solve that problem when we come to it. The 
right crank arm. So this needs to go on the opposite way to the left crank arm. So like that. So now we're going to get the pedals off the old cranks so we can put them on our new ones. Um, so this might be easier to do at the start when these are still on the bike but I didn't do that. So. Now we have our left and our right pedals. So we got right side pedal. Gonna go in here. You just have to remember, uh, I think, when you're doing it and undoing it, that the drive side or the right hand pedal is a normal thread where it's righty tighty, lefty loosey. The left hand side is the opposite thread, so it'll be lefty tighty, righty loosey. But I've already done the left side. So I'm going to do this right side, which is a normal thread, so I'm going to turn it clockwise to do it up. Do it up fairly tight. Mm. <clears throat> there we are. 